what do I know about censorship in schools? Before I began this research, I knew very little. I had heard about it here and there with various talks about removing books because they contained racial words or profiles of groups. I learned through my reading that censorship in schools takes many different forms. It can be censorship in books, the internet, and what students are allowed to watch in the classroom. Many of the articles touched on the subject of having parents being able to ban books from the library by signing petitions. There was one case in Utah where a group of parents deemed a book about having lesbian mothers as unsuitable for the students in the school. They petitioned the district, to which the district decided to place the book behind the checkout counter at the library, available to any student that had a permission slip signed by a parent. The signed permission slips were a popular idea among my surveyors, 54% of them having a positive opinion of the idea. A librarian spoke out to a local newspaper, which caused outside groups to get involved, and they eventually pressed a lawsuit against the district. Before the lawsuit went to court, the district decided to place the book back on the shelves of their school libraries. Many believe censorship to be a violation of First Amendment rights, which were the was the grounds the lawsuit was based on. Our First Amendment rights state that we are entitled to freedom of speech, which censorship inherently inhibits. The motives behind censorship can range from family values, to political views, to religion, to minority rights. So who in our schools should make these decisions? Based on the survey I created, which was taken by 100 people, 82% believe that parents should have an input followed by 79% believing trained teachers and librarians should have an input. Students come in at 61%, school boards and superintendents have 55% support, and the government comes in with 17% support. In Henry Reichman's opinion, whoever chooses the material should be aware of the fact that we are very quick to censor things for minors, but not to adults. The censorship can hinder the student's ability to make their own decisions about the world around them because they are underexposed to varying viewpoints. Censorship is something that continues through college. The information in Censorship in the End of the American Debate states that some schools reserve the right to expel students on the basis of them unholding an unpopular opinion and voicing it throughout the campus. The rate at which Many students hold an unpopular opinion decreases significantly from their freshman year to their senior year of college. It is noted that the higher an ed education a person has, the less encounters that they have with people who hold different opinions. The encounters are rated to be higher among people who did not graduate from high school. It is my personal opinion, developed through my research, that libraries should be a safe place for students to explore topics about the world around them. Based on personal experience, some students may only have their school library as a resource as their parents or guardians do not have time to take them to the public library. Schools should take into account that they need to educate the whole child. This includes the portion of the child that is responsible for creating their own opinions about the world around them. I feel like if we started promoting this earlier on in schools, some students wouldn't have such a culture shock when they first come to college. If we are going to create future functioning members of society, they need to be able to create and hold their own opinions while respectfully disagreeing with someone else.